Well, here we are again, folks. It's Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. And this is going to be the fourth and last uh, little infomercial that I'm going to do today for the 63 Club. It's in if you'll punch on 63club.com and sign in, you'll get the directions on what to do to join up. Now, this is a prayer club, and this is for men only. This is not for women. You women have a place. I've said that before. <clears throat> when you women read this and it says men only, thousands of you women are going to punch on because you don't like anything that says men only. Well, let me tell you a little story. I'm not going to waste much time here, but you ladies have a place in the world, and your place in the world is to be a queen to a man. And you can be a queen to a man if you buckle under and say, I'm going to be behind that man 100%. And if anybody sees me, they're going to see him first, and then they're going to see me. And you get behind your man, you lift him up, you build him up, and you help him be the man he needs to be, especially if it's a spiritual man. Don't pick at him. Listen, when God deals with a man, he deals different with a man he deals with a woman. He's tough on a man, God is. God says to a man, you got to clean up, straighten up if you're going to follow me. you got to put down, put away the things of the world. you got to shake off. You've got to, uh, when the Lord saved me in 1972, he reached through the top of my head, got me by the soles of the feet at 3 o'clock in the morning, November 5th, drunk, wrecked my car, and he shook me inside out and said, I'm going to shake all this stuff off you, Peter. And all that booze and, the, and all that stuff fell off of me. And I had been drunk for quite a while, but I guarantee you what, the very next breath I took after God touched me was a sober breath with no alcohol smell on it. And it's been that way since November 5th, 1972. It's 3 o'clock in the morning when God touched me. And 3 o'clock in the morning, by the way, is my special time. The Lord still wakes me up at that time in the morning and wants to commune with me. And I'm lazy. Some mornings I do like I did this morning and lay in bed for a while. But hey, if I'm not in communion with him, there's no rest, there's no peace, there's no nothing. So I have to, I have to do, you know what, I, I said this and I want to say it again. It's like the 63 Club. This, this was a dream. This was a dream. You know how it became action by the man taking the drink, put his feet on the floor. Now, I can lay in bed at 3 o'clock in the morning and be a dreamer, or I can let my feet hit the floor and be an active person and be used of God, and be used of God at 3 o'clock in the morning. And and I've done this, and I've done it before, and, and I'm going to be doing it again in my life. Go out, get in the car. I can get a cup of coffee at the house for almost pennies. But I can go down to the all-night gas station and go in and get a cup of coffee. Witness to the person, the truck driver beside me getting a cup of coffee, give him a track. And then I can witness to the lady at the counter, give her a track. Then I can go out to the gas pumps. If I only need a dollar's worth of gas, I can put it in the car or carry my little gas can down there to get some for the lawnmower. And while I'm there, I can witness to the man at the cash, the uh, gas pump. And what do you say, Brother Peter? I'm saying that we, Christian, are you a Christian? Can you look in the mirror at yourself and say, I am a watchman for the Lord Jesus Christ? Over here in Isaiah chapter 52, down in verse 7, it said, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings and publish peace. Now, I want to bring good tidings and publish peace wherever I go. Can you look at yourself during the day and say, I'm a peace publisher. I publish good tidings everywhere I go. Remember, I told you this morning, Brother Adrian was preaching this morning. By the way, WOAK.com LaGrange is on 24 hours a day. Uh, Brother Adrian Rogers is on, I don't know, about 3.30 in the morning. And I don't know what time he'd be on in your land, wherever you are. 
but he was a he's a man to listen to and he was preaching there two ways there's a straight way that's the way straight and narrow goes to heaven and then there's a crooked way and that's a broad way that leads to hell now that broad way of destruction is where the average joe is today the average man today is on the broad road to destruction look in the mirror this morning and say am i going to die and go to hell or am i going to die and go to heaven now you want to really wake yourself up you want to really wake yourself you say brother peter you sometimes you talk a little foolish well i talk foolish yeah but my, the foolishness that i talk can make you have a little sense sometimes i tell you why you're in that mirror this morning uh today or whenever you are get your match and light it stand there looking in that mirror and hold that match under your finger lip and do you know what you're going to see you ain't going to be able to stand it you're going to have to move your finger well i'm going to tell you what jesus said that that's what hell is like that the soul of man that goes to hell the worm dieth not that means that the soul of man becomes like a worm in hell and squirms and wiggles and can not die and the flame is making him do it now the soul on the straight road that goes to heaven and god has given us some examples through through life he put the children of israel the four boys shadrach meshach and abednego and the son of god in the fiery furnace and they were in there that was seven times hotter than even the men that built it could stand. And they walked through it and came up without the smell of smoke on them. And then the next guy that we see walking in hell and in fire was Jesus Christ. He left the grave and walked through hell, took the keys from the devil of hell and death, and then went over and got paradise. But the picture I want you to see here this morning is that you and I that are on a straight road now, when we die, we can pass straight through hell, walk right through. The fire would not bother us. The fire would not affect us. It wouldn't, we wouldn't get a drop of smell out of it. We wouldn't get a drop of flame to hurt us. It wouldn't bother us. The fire will not touch the born-again believer of God in the end time. And that's when it's going to come. When we close the door to this life, and open the door to eternity. Which door are you going to open? Are you going to open the door to eternal fire? Or are you going to open the door to eternal bliss with God forever? And be by the, the river of water. Life. Well, river of life said flows through the center of heaven. With 12 uh, trees on each side of it. And each one yielding 12 manner of fruit on a monthly basis. And... And we're going to be back, if you please. The Garden of Eden was made by God for man to enjoy the rest of the days of his life. But the devil come along and lied to man and made him get something in him that's called selfishness. I was going to say a while ago on one of the other excerpt, I got a dictionary that explains selfishness. It takes three pages. <laughs> three pages and it's not exhausted then uh listen selfishness is what one does only for himself are you going to be a proclaimer over here in this last verse was uh that jesus came he died on the cross for you and i and he became the first fruit of the proclaiming of the way of salvation which is through him and the way of salvation is through the cross and through jesus christ and i've said this so many times he rent that veil and now the only veil there is is him jesus said no man can come to the father except through me the son and then the holy spirit will come to dwell in your heart and then you can pray out loud. Join the 63 Club, 63ClubMen.com, LaGrange. Uh, you don't have to say LaGrange, but if you want us, W-O-K.com, LaGrange, Georgia.
is the best place to go.